Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I've got my Icom IC705. So this is a ham radio. If you follow the channel, you'll know that I'm into ham radio as well. I'm a licensed operator. And yeah, I can use something like this, which is basically a full band um, amateur transceiver. So you can basically talk to people around the world on this. Um, and yeah, it's a great radio. If you've got one, you'll know what it is. But what I wanna do today is take it apart and take a soldering iron to it because I'm actually gonna modify this um, and open up the bands on it so that you can use it on the CB frequencies. The advantage of doing that with something like this is the fact it gives you so much better audio and you can have like a full SDR experience on the CB bands. Yes, CB is still being used if you don't, if you're not being follow, follow what it is. There's been a surge of activity around there and um, yeah, there's lots, lots of people on there. So let's get cracking, shouldn't be too difficult. There's only six screws on here. But take the battery off first and um, we'll see how it goes. So I'm following a guide online to do this um, and the first step is to take out these six screws. So you've got one, two, three, four and then one on the top and one on the bottom. I think that's it. So let's get going. These are supposed to have been locked tighted in. They do feel a little bit, do feel a little bit tight. Let's get these out Ooh. and Put them in my nice little box to make sure I don't lose anything. I've done this mod before on different radios. Um, this one is slightly more involved because of how compact it is. Um, so yeah, you've got to take out a few different things, including a couple of ribbon cables and all that. This shouldn't be too too dramatic. Yeah, they've got blue locks on. Always try and always try and be careful not to actually scratch the screw so it looks like the radio has not been taken apart. So screws are out, it comes apart pretty nicely. Easy. So what we're saying here is we've got to take off basically these two ribbon cables here. Now we're going to take them off from the main, not the main board, so this is the front panel. So I'm going to basically just remove those from here, prise these out. The rest of it don't fly off the table. Right, okay. So we can put this aside and then you've got basically, I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six screws on that. By the looks of things. Basically you want to take this metal shield off. So let's do that. There's this little ribbon cable as well which has got to come out. The best way to do that is probably with some sort of tool like that. And it has got like kind of these little prongs on the edge, like kind of, you can see this, has got these kind of little um, little springs here which basically hold it in place. That's not a problem, should come out fairly easy. That's out. So basically you've got two little coax connectors, really small. There's a grey one here which comes around onto this side of the board here and what we're trying to do is access the underside of this board. So what we've got to do is obviously take that grey one out because it's going to stop the board from kind of pivoting around. But there's also this screw in the middle which needs to come out, that one there. So I literally use my fingernail just to prise that connector up you can see it's off off the actual connector now and um, there you go so the whole board is loose now you've got obviously your um, headphone and microphone connectors or you know audio connectors on this side so you're gonna have to slide the board across slightly to enable you to kind of get it to you know pivot out also that little silver thing might look worrying at first but it, it just kind of rests up against that ground shield so I don't think you've got to worry about that. 
So yeah, basically the board will flip out. You can see obviously why you need to remove that gray one. And you don't need to remove this ribbon, but you can kind of, you know, move this out. Um, you might have to slide it to the right because of these two connectors in these two audio sockets at the end here. Just shove it across so that it actually can pivot out. And then basically you can turn it over and access what you need to on here. So we're talking this little bank of diodes, which you need to remove two of those very carefully. And that should open up the bands. But I'm gonna just get this radio in a better position, get this board maybe flat on this surface so I can actually just take them off. So yeah, according to the document, there's two. There's one diode that, well, there's, there's a massive bank of diodes here, but um, the two that you've got to remove, on this radio, one's already been removed. I think that is the one for five megahertz. Um, maybe that's just how this UK one comes. But basically there's another one you need to remove and that one is on this board. So I'm gonna crack on and get that one off and um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so just got me iron. I'm gonna try, I've got a very, very fine pair of tweezers here as well. My eyesight's super good, so I don't really need a magnifier. I'm gonna try and just heat one side of the diode up and hopefully it'll just heat the whole thing up. What you could really do is a, is a hot air gun, like a, um, a soldering, desoldering tool, but I haven't got one of those here. Right, got it up, got it off. Wasn't the most easiest way of doing it. Um, I just heated up, basically just heated the diode up um, to the point where it just melted the solder on the other terminal. Because you've got two terminals, one either side obviously, you want to sort of try and it's very hard to do both at the same time that's why a heat gun would actually be pretty useful um just heat up the area and then just whip it off with the things like a rework station but i haven't got my rework station here i'm just going to just dab the pads just to make sure there's no excess solder on there and we should be good to go so there you go you can see it basically bottom left row furthest left one removed by that inductor you see the um like the solder looks fairly neat there's no like bridging across to anything else that's what you've got to be careful of with this sort of stuff but yeah it looks okay could have been neater but you know could have been a bit easier with a proper desoldering station but yeah anyway done let's stick it back together and see if it works Right, moment of truth then. So I'm just gonna stick the battery on first and just make sure it powers up okay. Um, it's on because it was on last time. It's turning on. So, see if it transmits on uh, on 27 megahertz then. For that, we need a 27 megahertz antenna. Oops, I've got one here, but I don't think this is completely tuned to 27 megahertz. Yeah, probably a good way to get electrocuted. I'll just stick it on here anyway. I've also stuck the mic in as well. So, if we head over to 28, 27, you can actually see the TX has got a solid line around it, which should mean you should be able to transmit. Um, and I'll just do that briefly on air, just to see if it actually, actually works. There you go, you can see this, the SWR is really high. But yeah, it basically transmits on 27 megahertz now, which is pretty cool. So if we now try and transmit, so this is set to channel 19, and I've got a CB over here on channel 19 as well. We should, test my two. Yeah, getting some audio out of there. So that's working, cool. So, next thing to do, be to try it out in the field and see if it works. I'm gonna probably try it with a mag loop, um, another antenna that's pretty good. This one, I'm not sure. It, it's supposed to be a 27 megahertz antenna. I mean, it's not gonna help that it's on the, on the side here, but the SWR isn't, isn't that great. So, this was, this was from Amazon, this, um, this antenna. 
and I thought it looked like the best one, but nothing's going to be perfect at this sort of, you know, frequency. But yeah, kind of works. We'll see what actually happens, whether I can actually make a contact on it um, like this. Yeah, roger roger no worries at all i'm just um actually hand portable over over the back not too far away from you actually you'll be running alongside me i'm just sort of old harlow way over uh roger roger yeah no sounds uh sounds good yeah nice audio over this way um i'm just testing out something actually just um doing a youtube video um see what i see what i can get just basically yeah, got a got an icon radio here over here with um just a telescopic. I'm standing in the middle of a field over. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, no, so you'll be um you'll be you'll be on the uh, <laughs> you'll be on YouTube, that's if you don't unless you don't want to be. So it's working, which is cool. Um that guy was just literally just on the on the motorway, probably I don't know, a few miles away over that way. Um the one, the night channel 19 on CB is like super busy at the moment. Um, it is literally really, really hard to get a word in edgeways around here. Like, bit of noise, there's a bit of noise come up, but that's why you've got to kind of go somewhere a bit more quiet, like up here, because there's a lot of radio noise. But there's generally just like no, no gap. Like there's somebody on here 20, 24 seven at the moment, it seems. <laughs> that's mad, isn't it? So I'm getting a fairly good SWR as well. Um, so I've had to, I'm using this um, battery pack so I can actually kind of, you know, run full power on this radio. And um, like I've had to adjust the antenna a little bit because I think this is just kind of acting as a bit of a counterpoise. But yeah, it seems to be working pretty well. Station in Enham, copy. Yeah, copy mate. Hello mate, you've got Andy over this way. I'm in uh, Harlow, so a little way away from you, but uh, not too far over. Lovely job, lovely job. I'm actually portable, over. I'm mobile, yeah, I'm just mobile. So, as you can see, I've whipped out the mag loop, and, I mean, the difference is night and day. Like, that is, that is really impressive. So, Henham's what, I don't know, probably, I don't know, it's like 15, 15 something miles away from, from here, I suppose, maybe a bit further. It's definitely more elevated than this position, but, yeah, it works well. The mag loop is, is again, just amazing. So to sum up then, the mod works well. Obviously it enables other frequencies as well. Um, I didn't really go into that. So you can add, it extends all of the ranges. Um, unfortunately it doesn't cover 70 megahertz, which has been a bit of a topic of controversy for this radio. Um, but obviously it gives you an extra band, uh, a couple of bands if you want to do this. And it also opens up the UHF side as well and airband if you're licensed to use that as well. So you can use, use that on, um, on the airbands in AM. And what's pretty crazy is there's actually so many people about on CB at the moment. Um, you know, so it's, easy, it's quite easy to get a contact because there's always someone around that's actually not far away. Um, so CB has kind of made a bit of a comeback around here. And I think it has in other areas, um, according to um, one of my good friends, Ringway Manchester. Um, big shout out to him for inspiring me to get on the airwaves again and start messing around. So yeah, shout out to you, mate. So yeah, I think it's well worth doing this mod if you want to use it on CB frequencies, um, do so at your own risk. But basically, you're going to get great quality audio because the Icon radios have got amazing audio, um, which is going to do so well at cutting through all of the noise on that really noisy um, CB band. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this one. Mixing up as usual. More stuff coming soon. E-bikes, scooters, music, all that. Catch you later, guys. Yeah.